Oh, come on. It's, a, it's as plain as the nose on your face. The shotgun shoots high into the right. Hmm. You ought to try aim at the X, Joe. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> I did aim at the X, and from 30 feet away, I should have blown the whole middle out of that sure, car. You should, sure. Well, give me for asking what may seem to be an obvious question, but uh, this is a working ranch, isn't it? And you boys supposed to be out riding fence? Oh, yeah, we, we were already riding fence. We're going to go out again. Uh -huh. Don't, don't you remember you told me to get a whole mess of quail for dinner? Yeah, yeah. Since when are we shooting quail in the living room? <laughs> it ain't likely you hit one in here either, Paul. Had two pot shots and he hit much of the feather. There's something wrong with the shotgun, Pa. See? Look. Yeah, sure is. Either that or the hunter. <laughs> yeah, ain't it funny, Paul? Man shoots at a target and he hits it. He's a good shot. He misses it. It's a bad gun. <laughs> you you can do better with it, right? Why don't you take it and try it? Yeah, it's more than just a little bit bad. The whole assembly's loose. Joe, hand me a shell. I think the, uh, there's too much room at the breach. Did I tell you? Yeah, you keep fooling huh? that Did gun, Did I tell you Joe? something wrong with it? You find something wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hi, Al. Come in. Awesome. Oh, huh? Ben? Oh, this is Deputy Gibbs from Olympus. Hi, Mr. Gibbs. Happy to meet you. Mr. Gibbs? Come on in. Come on in. Well, what brings you out here? Well, I'm sorry to say we're here on official business. Hello, Gibbs. I got a paper to serve, Candy. Uh, a warrant for your arrest. Yeah? For what? First degree murder. Wrong man, Gibbs. I didn't kill anybody. Let me see that one. Who am I supposed to have killed? Jedediah Wheelock. And I, I... I gotta take you back. Oh, no, you're not taking me anyplace. Candy, you're just making it worse. Don't try it. This gun's not worth much at 30 yards, but at 20 feet, it'll blow a hole in you the size of your hat. Put down the gun. No disrespect, but I don't intend to be dragged back and tried for something I didn't do out in that town. But you know this fellow. What's his name? Jed Wheelock, yeah, I know him. You say you're innocent, fine, I believe you. We all believe you. We'll back you all the way, but you've got to face this thing. We'll get your lawyer the best. Joe, ride with you to Olympus. If that's all right with the deputy. I'm glad to have the company. Paul, why don't we all go? Joe can handle this. You uh, send us a telegram if you need any help. Right. You ready? No. But I'll go. I'll be in touch. Take Gibbs to get back, Sheriff. Two days, Mr. Wheelock. Two and a half at the most. He sent the telegram day before yesterday. Should be in this afternoon. Yes, uh, thank you, Dawes. I'd already reached that conclusion. No doubt about this Candy being the right man. Appears to be. Well, he's the one man with motive and opportunity, Mr. Wheelock. He's being brought in, that's what counts. But I want to make sure he's guilty. If he was picked up on the Ponderosa, that means he's one of Ben Cartwright's hands. Cartwright has a reputation for sticking by his men. Well, guilty's guilty, Mr. Wheelock. The law doesn't pay favorites. It better not, Mr. Prosecutor. My son was shot to death, but no one is ever going to be able to say that A.Z. Wheelock railroaded an innocent man. Well, you don't have to worry about that, Mr. Wheelock. Gibbs is bringing in the right man. And he's going to hang. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> Seems to me I've heard that somewhere before, Mary Elizabeth. No, really. Mrs. Daly has a package all ready for me. Uh, all I have to do is pay her and pick out a matching ribbon. All right. Hold up, fellas. Uh, all right, just snap some handcuffs on your candy. Just so the sheriff will see him when we get to jail? Sure. Much obliged. 
Well, they fixed that big window on the saloon, Candy. <laughs> oh, you should have seen it, Cartwright. Best fight Olympus ever had. Between him and Wheelock, the man he shot. Oh, excuse me. I meant the man they say you shot. It's all right. Anyway, old Candy picked up that Wheelock boy and flang him straight through that big window. Do tell. And he dove right through what was left of the glass after Wheelock, didn't you, Candy? Anything you say. By the time it was through, <laughs> the saloon was a mess, and they they had busted seven more windows in the hotel and the and the general store. Whoa! -hee. Like you say, Gibbs. Woo wee. Say one thing for you, you sure picked a heck of a way to show this town how you felt about Jed Wheelock. And on the very morning of the day he was killed. There, you see? All right. I told you I don't need a second. Isn't that candy? Yeah, so watch the step, my dear. Like a murderer. I wish someone would tell me what a murderer looks like, Mary Elizabeth. Given sufficient provocation, anyone can murder. Sudden rage, revenge, self defense. A hundred motives, a thousand set of circumstances. And in each case, someone dies. Yes. Society demands that someone pay for it. You know this cowboy Candy? I heard about him as all lazy. Hothead, isn't he? He's supposed to be. Yeah. Darn near smashed up the whole street fighting with Jed, didn't he? Mm hmm. Fuller, the sheriff is strictly a yes sir, no sir man. Well, you point him in the right direction, put him up against a man with a gun, you couldn't ask for a better man. But he's useless in an investigation. Yes, I know. Hub does isn't much better. The only reason he's prosecutor is because you didn't want the job. I don't think he'd know a piece of evidence if it stood up and bit him. I think you're being awful hard on him, Maisie. I want to make sure that the right man goes on trial for Jed's murder. Do you understand? Yeah. I'm not afraid of Ben Cartwright or anybody else. Nobody's going to say that we strung up an innocent man just to get revenge for my boy. Well, I've looked at the evidence. Looks pretty strong to me. I don't want it pretty strong. I want it airtight. I know, Easy. I'll take care of it. A uh, fuller. Yeah. I don't want people to say that the deck's stacked. Now that cowboy's got to be defended and defended right. I know, Easy. I'll take his case. You do what? Well, who else is there? Unless he sends to Virginia City, and I doubt if he has the money for that. And even if he has, the delay could hurt him bad. But you're my lawyer. Everybody knows that. And you think people would figure you had me take the case so that cowboy couldn't possibly get off? What else? A lot of people around this town that are so jealous of me, they'd believe anything as long as it was the worst. It's the price you pay for success, Hazy. Name me one man who would believe that you were honestly trying to get that cowboy acquitted. Two men. Me and you. I'd believe it because I'd know it was the truth, and before I was finished, everybody else in town would believe it, too. And you, Hazy, you'd believe it because you know I don't work any other way. If I take his case, I'll fight for him. All right. You got my blessings. Defend him. If he'll have me. After all, it is his choice. Hey. Mm -hmm. Just so there's no mistake, I hope it's open and shut, like Dawes says. I hope the cowboy hangs. Full research on this case. I think you'll find it in this volume. Come in. Thank you. Mr. Fuller? That's right, Mr. Um... Cartwright. Joe Cartwright, I rode in this morning with Deputy Gibbs and Candy. Oh, yes. Um, pull up a chair, Cartwright. Sit down. Thank you. The uh, sheriff tells me you offered to defend Candy. That's right. 
You know the case pretty well. As well as anyone, I guess. You mind a personal question? No, go right ahead. Did you offer to defend him because you think he's innocent? That's quite a coincidence, Mr. Cartwright. My daughter asked me that same question not a half hour ago. And what did you tell her? Same thing I'll tell you. The law says he has a right to a speedy trial by a jury of his peers, the right to face his accusers in open court, and the right to counsel. In other words, you think he's guilty? Well, that decision will be up to the judge and the jury. If I'm retained as his counsel, I'll do my best to prove him innocent. But between you and me, Mr. Cartwright, we're going to need all the help we can get. Yes, sir, we just about give up hope of ever finding you to let telegram come from Virginia City. There must have been over a hundred telegrams sent out. Every place we could think of. Sorry to cost the taxpayers so much money. <laughs> what do you mean the taxpayers? Why, A.Z. Wheelock sent them telegrams. Every one of them. Paid for them, too. Can't really blame him for that, boy. After all, you shot his son. I didn't shoot anybody. Yeah, all right, all right. Leastways, you made it look like you shot his son. Running off like you did. Didn't run off, either. I left so I wouldn't kill it. <laughs> Howdy, Mr. Fuller. Yes, sir. Hold it, young man. Give me a gun. Candy, this is Mr. Fuller. Yeah, I know. How do you do? Sit down, Candy. You're in big trouble. Candy, I don't know you really, but I've seen you around town. I'd be glad to act as your counsel if you want me. Why? Why would you be glad to act as my counsel? If you think I got money, I ain't. Come on, come on, take it easy. Oh, no, that's all right. He's got a perfect right to ask questions. Maybe you think I'm the most popular fellow in Olympus, and you got political ambitions. What lawyer hasn't? Oh, come on, you got to have some reason for wanting to defend me. No, Candy, no, it's not so much a reason as a principle, you might say. I think you're entitled to the best legal help available. And that's you? That's me. Also, the only legal help available in this town, except for the prosecutor. Joe, you've talked to him. What do you think? We could get in touch with Pa and see about a lawyer from Virginia City, but Mr. Fuller's got a good reputation. Thank you, Conrad. Gonna have to make a decision. You got a hearing day after tomorrow. All right, Mr. Lawyer, you're hired. And not only did the defendant threaten Jed Wheelock with bodily harm on numerous occasions and before numerous witnesses, he did provoke and engage Jed Wheelock in a long and savage fight on the main street of Olympus. Objection, I... Your Honor. The argument the prosecution is talking about has nothing to do with the matter at hand. It has everything to do with it. I can and will produce 50 witnesses who we saw... We admit the altercation, Your Honor. No sense of wasting the court's time. I agree. I should like to point out, however, Your Honor, that nothing the prosecution has said has any bearing on the issue. Has the prosecution anything further to offer in the way of evidence? No, Your Honor. Not at the moment. Mr. Fuller. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, my client has been accused of the willful and cold-blooded murder of Jed Wheelock. In support of this allegation, the prosecution has offered nothing but the flimsiest of evidence. I intend to show how little real fact and how much imagination the prosecution has brought to this arraignment. And do that as briefly as possible. Of course, Your Honor. My client was cheated by Jed Wheelock, denied of money as rightfully due him. Objection. This is pure supposition. Well, Mr. Fuller... Well, Your Honor, true or false, my client believed he was cheated by Jed Wheelock. And that's all that really matters here. He tried to collect his money. He argued with Mr. Wheelock as any man who believed he'd been cheated would. They fought. Not in secret or in hiding, but in full view of half of the people of this town. <laughs> now, Judge, you and I know that fights are not uncommon in Olympus. Men argue. They settle their arguments and vent their anger with their fists. They fight. One or the other wins. They shake hands. An old and common practice. Now, I submit, Your Honor, that any man who was planning a cold-blooded murder would not first announce that plan by staging a brawl in the middle of Main Street. I further submit, Your Honor, that my client stands accused of first-degree murder because no real attempt has been made to find the real criminal. The defense knows better, Your Honor. Sheriff Henning looked into this matter thoroughly. 
Your Honor, no one has a higher regard for Sheriff Henning than I do. Olympus is indeed fortunate to have him as its protector. We all know that no gunman in this territory would dare to go up against Sheriff Henning alone in a fair fight. But some of us also know that as an investigator, the sheriff leaves a great deal to be desired. <laughs> That's enough. Any more, and I'll have the room cleared. Go on, Mr. Fuller. Your Honor, I challenge the validity of the evidence offered by the prosecution and move that the charges against my client be dismissed. Your Honor, hey, Judge. Yeah. Uh, Your Honor, I've seen the killing, and I figured I ought to tell you about it. I object to Your Honor. This is a trick of the prosecution. Mr. Dawes, did you know about this? No, Your Honor. Mr. Eggers, if you saw the killing, why haven't you come forward before? Well, sir, Your Honor, the plain truth is I was scared. I mean, with the killer running loose, if I told what I'd seen, my life wouldn't be worth a red cent. But now that you've got him locked up, I can talk. You're talking about me, Eggers. You're lying. I didn't kill Jed Wheelock. The prisoner will sit down. All right, sit down. Sit down. Mr. Fuller? That evidence you were talking about may have arrived. Take off your hat and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I sure do. Sit down. Mr. Dawes, will you question the witness? Did you see Jed Willock killed? Well, if you mean did I see the bullet hit or the body fall, the answer is no. But I've seen everything else. In your own words, what did you see? Well, I went out to the Wheelock Horse Ranch. I walked out. It was after dark, and I cut across the field past the corral, and when I got near the barn, I heard a shot. First, there was loud voices, but then I heard the shot. Well, go on. Well, when the shooting starts, I stop. I stepped into a shadow. Then I saw the door open, and I... I seen Candy come out, and I seen him get on his horse, and I seen him ride away. You're a liar! That's enough. Your Honor, I should like to ask this witness a question. No objection, Your Honor. Proceed, Mr. Fuller. Thank you, sir. Mr. Eggers. Mr. Eggers, do you drink? <laughs> Surely you know that. Were you drinking the night of the killing? I was not drinking. As a matter of fact, I went out there to try to borrow some money so I could. <laughs> <laughs> no more questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, I would like to repeat my motion to have the charges against my client dismissed. Motion denied. Court orders the defendant bound over for trial. Court's adjourned. Come on, you. Come on. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Don't find a leggers came in. The unexpected eyewitness, Mr. Cartwright, is something hard to beat. Oh, you mean eyewitness he was lying? Well, this was just a hearing. At the trial, I'll destroy him and his story. I think I better get in touch with my father. Whatever you think best. The uh, telegraph office is just down the street. Things look bad for Candy. Need you and Hoss and our lawyer. Sign Joseph. Can you send that right away? Yeah. yeah it's uh, 60 cents for every 10 words. That'd be $1.20. There you are. Thank you. Wheelock would like to see that telegram before it's sent. Much flat. Yeah, she certainly will be interested in seeing this. See your trouble.
want to talk to the prisoner. Card right. How you doing? Sure. Why wasn't AZ Wheel like in that courtroom today? He won't rest until his son's murder is convicted and hanged, and he wasn't even at the trial. Why not? That's a good question. Why not? Because he knew Eggers was going to walk through that door. That yeah, could be. So everybody else was pretty surprised. Fuller and that prosecutor looked like they got hit by lightning. So how well did you know this, uh, this Eggers? Well, he's a saloon swamper. Does odd jobs. Drunk. Did he have anything against you? We didn't even know each other. Yeah, well, that leaves two possibilities. One, the old man's just making an honest mistake. The other, he's being paid to lie. He's lying. That's what Fuller thinks. He figures he can take him and his story apart at the trial. He didn't do much to him today. This is just a hearing. Signs if he needs help, he's going to get it. He sent a telegram. Pa, Hoss, and the best lawyer in Virginia City are on their way here. Joe, thanks. You know, I'd feel better if you didn't think we needed the extra help. Suppose he is telling the truth. Supposing Jed Wheelock did try and cheat him out of payment for five horses. But, my dear, even supposing it's true, that wouldn't ameliorate the offense. Murder is murder. And why would young Wheelock cheat him? He certainly didn't need the money. Because Jed Wheelock was no good, that's why. Because he always had to get at people and try and hurt them. That's the way he got his fun out of life. And he always knew what to use. But you'd never hear me talking about Jed Wheelock like that, did you, Papa? Well, aren't you proud of me now that I can finally admit he was no good? I heard from your Aunt Ruth today. She and your cousin Sally have fairly turned their house upside down, getting it ready for you. They can hardly wait to see Mary Elizabeth. Yes? Hi, Mr. Fuller. My name's Cartwright. Horse Cartwright. Joe's brother? Yes, sir. The sheriff told me I might find him here. No, no, he's not here. But well, won't you come in? You're, um... You're a long way from home, young man. Yes, sir. Did your father come with you? No, he got called down to Carson City. I'm alone. Uh -huh. Sheriff tells me that I gotta get your permission before I can talk to Candy. Is that a fact? Well, yes, that's just a normal legal precaution. He's appointed me as attorney. Yes, sir. I know. You ain't got nothing against me talking to him, have you? No, 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 of course not. Uh, I'll go with you. Mary Elizabeth. Mary Elizabeth, we have a visitor. I have to go out for a while. It's my daughter, Mr. Horse Cartwright. Happy to meet you, ma'am. Uh, my daughter's heading east very shortly. Yes, yeah, she'll be going to school in the east. Staying with my sister up in Maine until she makes up her mind which school to grace. Good night, my dear. Good night. Mr. Cartwright? After you. Jed Wheelock ordered 15 head of horses by telegraph. I drove him through town. I drove him out to his ranch. He accepted delivery. We agreed on a price, $50 a head. He asked me to meet him in town at the bank the next morning. So I did, and he gave me $500. I said, uh, you're $250 short. He said, no, 10 head of horses at $50 a head is $500. I said, 10, I delivered 15. He called me a liar, and that's when I hit him. How many times are you gonna go over his story? You talked about it all night long, it's daylight. It's my case and my client, Sheriff, you let him talk. What are you doing here? I sent you a telegram. I've been riding two days. We got tired of waiting for word, and Paul had to go to Carson City, so he sent me alone. Joe, where you been all night? I went out to Wheelock's ranch. What would you want to go out there for? Because I wanted to check on Eggers' story. I already checked it. On the night of May 29th, there was a full moon. Eggers could have seen Candy. If there wasn't anyone there when I was there, how many times do I have to tell you that? Oh, Candy, what did happen out there at Wheelock's that night? Oh, so I've been... Over this and over Just this. One more time for us. All right, I was still burning. He owed me $250, open and above board. 
So I went out to the ranch, and I told Jed he'd better pay me the money then and there, or I'd... <laughs> well, I threatened him. You know, the kind of things you say when you're mad. Well, he just sniggered at me, told me to go ahead and shoot. Go oh. Well, I've never shot first in a fight yet. I wasn't about to start then. I called him some names, hoping he'd draw. He just stood there, laughing. So I got on my horse and I rode out. Just, just like that, huh? Well, I know it sounds funny, but I was scared I might kill him. The next morning, I got on my horse and I rode out of town. It was two, three weeks later before I even knew he was dead. That's the truth. I will believe you. Do you believe me, Mr. Fuller? You don't have to convince me. You have to convince the jury. <laughs> I'm disappointed your father didn't show up, Cartwright. How come? He figured our little town was too small to bother with? Thought he could send his boys to handle us, hmm? No, sir. He got called into Carson City. I bet he figured you boys could ride in, straighten out the trouble, and ride right out again. <laughs> well, it's not going to be that simple. Where you come from, you might not have heard of A.Z. Wheelock, but here I'm the big frog, and when I croak, the little frogs all hop. We're sorry about your son, Mr. Wheelock. But we came here to help a friend. I'm sure you don't object to that. This is my town. I don't like strangers butting in. In other words... Everybody's supposed to just sit back and watch an innocent man hang, huh? No. That cowboy's going to have the best defense possible. And then he hangs. Yes, if he's guilty. My son's dead. Shot before he could get his gun out of the holster. I didn't say this candy was guilty. His own actions done that. Well, that fight he had with Jed in front of a hundred witnesses. He was seen coming out of the house where Jed was shot. Well, that would be, uh, that would be Mr. Eggers. Well, I checked around about Mr. Eggers. People don't think too highly of him. They don't feel he's too reliable. Well, I admit he drinks. Why should he perjure himself? He didn't even know Candy. Mr. Wheelock, your son wasn't the most popular fellow around town, was he? He was envied because of me. There wasn't any real harm in him. Well, according to Candy's story, your son cheated him out of $250. My son's not alive to give his side of it. How would your pa feel if it had been you or your brother? Well, I guess he tried to turn the whole town upside down to find the truth. Well, there you are. And that's exactly what we're going to do. To prove Candy innocent. Good night, Mr. Wellick. Hey, listen, why don't you go on over and see how Candy's doing? I'm going to take it right out and talk to that fella Eggers. All right. What do you want, Eggers? I told you not to try reaching me. Now, now, Mr. Fuller. That's no way to say hello to an old friend. It, it was right nice of you to come out here after I sent you the little note. Uh, would you have a little drink? No, thanks. Uh, you don't mind if I wet things down. It, it gets a little dusty. All right, Eggers, I'm here. How much? Hmm? Eggers, whatever you think of me, I'm no fool. I'm not an unreasonable man. You've run out of money, right? Right. Well, you won't find me hard to deal with. I could have been a little more generous in the first place. Mm -hmm. Shall we say another 50? <laughs> <laughs> Doggone, there for a minute I thought you and me was going to be real partners. You're on the right road, but you didn't go far enough, Mr. Fuller. No. No. I've been thinking. There might be a good market for a man to swear to things that anybody wants him to swear to. Might be a lifetime job, you might say. <laughs> now, it stands to reason. You being a lawyer, you might like to have a good witness on your permanent payroll. Now, where could you find a better witness than old Eggers? Good, honest, loyal old Eggers. Who knows when to keep his mouth shut? <laughs> <gasps>
And knows what he's working for, too. Yes, might be a good living there. Money coming in week in, week out. Enough for liquor, tobacco, food, occasional card game. <laughs> oh, oh, but never so much, Mr. Fuller, that, that your good witness wouldn't be right there when you needed him. Right there when I needed him. Everything straight and above board, just between you and me. I guess, suppose I were to tell you I had no money. I've used up every penny to send my daughter back east to school. And maybe you'd better go crawling to your boss, A.Z. Wheelock, and beg the money from him. I didn't realize you were so ambitious. A man's got to get ahead in this world, doesn't he? Yes, he does, indeed. What about the next one, Agus? Come again? What about the next world? Does a man have to get ahead in that one, too? You must be sure to let me know, Agus. I, I didn't mean it. I, I, I don't want any money. I, I, I was just joking. I was just joking, too, I guess. How could you possibly send me a message from the next world? the gun. Your brother said you were coming out here. Guess I should have got here a little sooner. You're under arrest, Cartwright. For murder. Joseph heard a gunshot. He saw a man run out of Eggers' cabin. He yelled at him to stop, and then he fired. Now, that's two shots, right? Only one shot out of Joseph's gun. You want me to say I heard two shots? I didn't. I told you I didn't kill Eggers. There were three men in this town would have wanted to see that eyewitness dead. Candy, your brother, and you. Candy was locked up in that cell. I found your brother standing over the body, a gun in his hand, freshly fired, one bullet gone. That's good enough for me. I'm going to tell you something. The same man killed Eggers that killed Jed. And I say the man that killed Eggers is the man who wanted to help Candy beat the rope. Oh, come on. That doesn't make sense. I'm not going to commit murder to protect anybody. Well, like your lawyer said at the hearing, I ain't much good at investigation. I apologize for that, Sheriff. And you don't have to be much good at investigation when you catch the man red-handed. All right, I'm going to tell you something else. I ain't going to stop until I've talked to every man in this town that may know something that'll help. You better be careful. That's what got your brother where he is. I'll be careful. <laughs> Father's not here. I oh, think he's... Ma'am, it's you I want to talk to. Yes. Come in. Uh, may I um, offer you some refreshments? No, no, thank you, ma'am. Won't you have a seat? Thank you. Uh, Miss Fuller, I've been talking to everybody in town, or everybody that would sit still, that is, trying to find something that would help Candy. Did they? How well did you know him? 
just well enough to say hello to. He was... Well, some of the other cowboys that come into town are rough. But not Candy. He was always polite when we'd meet. So I just couldn't believe that he did it. He didn't, Miss Fuller. But who did? Do you know anybody that might have hated Jed? Anybody else he might have cheated? Anyone else he might have cheated? No, I, I don't know of anyone. Yeah, I reckon you wouldn't. Well, much obliged anyway, Miss Fuller. I, I wish I could have helped. I, I want to see the real murderer caught, too. Jed and I were friends. Of course. I hope we hadn't raked over too many memories. I'm much obliged again. What makes you think I could help you? What makes you think I would help you if I could? Because you said that you wanted to see the man who murdered your son hang. And I believe that. It's true. And you said you wanted to see a fair and honest trial so no man could question it. I did, and I do. Then, Mr. Wheelock, help me find the man who murdered Eggers. Your brother was found beside the body with a gun in his hand. Oh, Mr. Wheelock, you, you know our paw, you know our reputation. You think little Joe would murder a man just to help a friend? Mr. Wheelock, I need your help, and I need it bad. Who hated Eggers enough to want to see him dead? Eggers and your son. Nobody I can think of. I don't know. Jed had his fight, sure, but they weren't serious. What he had with Candy was, and there must have been others. You don't let go, do you? You tried to help Candy, now your brother's facing the same rope. I can't stand in your shoes, but I guess I know how you feel. I lost a son. When that happens, fast and unexpected, turns a man old and empty, awful quick. I had big plans for Jed. I wanted to see him married and settled. I thought for a while he was going to marry the Fuller girl. I want to give him everything. Hide hair and hooves. I just wanted to sit me down in the shade and play with my grandkids. Mr. Willock. Did you say that Jed and Mary Elizabeth were... Serious? Well, I thought so. Seemed that way to me. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Wheeler. Father still isn't here. Ma'am, I'd like to talk to you again if I could. Yes, of course. You're, uh, you're going back east to school, I think your father said. Yes. Maine? Yes. It's a pretty place I hear. I guess it's good to get as far away from unpleasant memories as you can. Talking to some of the town folks, they told me that that young Wheelock used to squire you around some of the dances and socials and such. Yes. You know how people gossip. Maine. I believe your father said you were going to be staying with an uncle. Aunt. Oh, yes, of course. You, uh, you must be very fond of her. We, uh, 
My, my, my father hasn't seen her in 20 years. Then you've, uh, you've never even met her? You must be looking forward to that. Going all the way back east to school and to be with his aunt. But you haven't decided which school you're going to yet, have you? No. You'll make up your mind after you get back to Maine. Well, I guess that's about all I need to cover. I hope I haven't been too much of a bother. Not at all. Miss Fuller. It is school you're going back east for, isn't it? What do you mean? Is it school or a hospital? <laughs> carrying his child. I told him. And he said, how did he know that it was his? Oh, I loved him. Of course it was his baby. How could it have been anyone else's? He refused to marry you. <laughs> then you told your father. No, Cartwright. She loved him too much. She wouldn't tell me anything. I knew there was trouble and more than just a lover's quarrel, so I rode out to see Jed to find out what had happened. He took great pleasure in telling me. You had better reason for killing him than Candy ever did, didn't you? No. Daddy wouldn't harm anybody. Tell him he didn't, Papa. Mary Elizabeth. Mary Elizabeth, he laughed when he told me you were pregnant. He gloried in his admission. He refused to marry you unless I could prove his parenthood. He said there had been others. That's when I killed him. Well, it ain't hard for me to sympathize with you, Mr. Fuller, but on the other hand, there's, there's an innocent man over there in the jail. Let's go talk to the sheriff. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. I'm afraid that's not part of my plan. Well, plans or no plans, we're... Cartwright, don't reach for your gun. I'd hate to shoot you, but I will if I'm forced. No, Mary Elizabeth. I know what I have to do. Oh. All right, Fuller, drop the gun. Papa! Papa! Papa, don't! Put the gun up, Mr. Fuller. Do like he says, Mr. Fuller. We don't want to get anybody hurt. to throw away his gun. Come on, come on. I've been in this town about six days too long. Mr. So Wheelock? Uh, may I come in? Candy, uh, the sheriff told me I'd find you here. I want to see you before you rode out. It was uh, five horses, $50 a piece. 
That's two hundred and fifty dollars. I don't. Oh, it's your money. Put it away. All right, thanks. I was wondering, have you seen Mary Elizabeth since the funeral? Yeah, we saw her about an hour ago. We said our goodbyes. Well, have an easy ride home. Look, ma'am. So long, Mr. Willock. Chuck Hill. Rent Pony and his renegades hit a ranch there this morning. Sweetwater this time. So far, 28 known dead, 12 ranches looted and burnt. Austin Little Joe rode up that way two days ago. Sweetwater again. Just stopped. Right in the middle of a word. Well, I'd better get back to the Ponderosa and get up to Sweetwater. Put him up, will you? Lieutenant? I'm Lieutenant March, sir. We were on a routine training patrol and ran into an ambush. We better get the wounded inside the house. Get a doctor from town. Hurry up, Joe. Sergeant, take the wounded inside. I lost half my men before I realized what hit us. How big a war party? 35, 40. I counted at least 20 rifles. The rest were armed with bows and lances. No, they'll have more rifles now. They just looted the Sweetwater ranches. Everything's gonna be all right. 
for it. I promise you. My orders are to find, harass, and delay the renegades until a major force arrives. Hardly possible with one non-com and one trooper able to ride, but I can scout this whole area. Well, Lieutenant, my sons rode up in that area. He won the ranchers, and I haven't heard a word from him. I'm riding with you. Be happy to have you, sir. Let's go. Check these rocks out. They look safe here. I don't believe there's any of them Indians here. You need anything? Yeah, can I? Give us some more water. Sure. Drink all you want. There's plenty. No more? There's plenty. No, oh, thanks. Fire over there and see smoke about a half mile away. Maybe help. Maybe just a bunch more Indians. No. No, they, they wouldn't give themselves away. I'll be right back. You'll be safe here in the shade. There's plenty of water here. I'll be right back. on that horse and ride out. There's renegade Indians right over that hill. They're killing and taking scalps. The smoke will attract their attention, so will that gunfire. You heard me ride out. My little brother's out there with a broken arrow in his shoulder. I need some help, and I need it bad. Why don't you help them, man, Breck? Ain't gonna hurt you. Get back on that horse. Get going. What those shots? A drifter, Mrs. Dawson. Just running him out of here. Mrs. Dawson, the man says his brother needs help. You were told to leave. You'd better do exactly that. I came here for help for my little brother, and I'm going to get it. You're wrong, my friend. Drop the rifle. I am an impatient man. Drop it. You better do what he says, Pilgrim. Jonathan Fraze is an old hand at shooting people in the back. My little brother's out there in bad shape. While we're standing around here talking, he might be dying. Give the man his gun, Mr. Fraser, and put yours away. Do as I say, Mr. Fraser. You're the wagon boss. But I own the wagons. Isaac, please. We made camp so you could rest. We can't go on till you do. I'm supposed to rest with gunshots and shouts all over the place? You stirred up quite a fuss, young man. Man's got a good reason, Doc. Doc? Yeah. Dr. Isaac Dawson, sir. Boys, well, that's the best luck I've run into in a long time. Doctor, my little brother's got a... Narrow in his shoulder. And you want me to remove it, huh? With these hands. Hardly possible. The 
shots. Thought you were in trouble. Just take it easy. See there, Doc? He needs immediate surgery. Looks like the pilgrim was sure telling the truth. Isaac, you can't. Even if you could hold a scalpel, you haven't got the strength. Still, you've been at my right hand with hundreds of patients. This time, you'll be my right hand. That cut. I want you to take the patient over there, but gently. Gently. Estelle, the instruments. Operating on strays with raiding parties all around, you're gonna get us all killed. Mr. Cartwright, I'll remove the arrowhead, but there's a fee. Your services, you and your gun, until further notice. You got a deal. All right. Joe. We're in luck. I've got a doctor and a nurse me. They're going to patch you up just as good as you. Now you can leave now. We can get along without you. Cut the shirt open, Estelle. Young man, this is going to hurt like the devil. So you'll help all of us if you lie as still as possible. Mr. Mulvaney, can you spare some of your bottle painkiller? Sure. <clears throat> I don't want any of that. Just get it. Just get that arrow out right. You may leave and take that with you. Uh, swab that with some alcohol. Uh. <laughs> Easy. That's fine. A scalpel. A little higher. Now, with a firm hand. Good. Yeah. Oh. Those hills, are they part of the Sweetwater Range? Yeah, they are. A whole lot farther than they seem to. Brett! Brett, take the first watch up on the hill. Why not him? He's the one who's spooked by Indians. Well, you know how I feel about Indians, but uh, I'd be glad to stand guard if you want me to. I don't want you. Now move out! Holler if you hear anything, no shots, and stay off the skyline. You'd be no good up there now. You'd be watching the camp and nothing else. If you ever get your brother patched up, you'll stand guard. I'll be ready. Red pony, huh? Hmm. You're getting to be a small world, Cartwright, ain't it? Too small. You, uh, you heard of Red Pony? Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard of him. I... You know, I was going to ration this, make it last, but now it's beginning to look like I'm going to have more whiskey than time. Have a bite? Oh, no, no thanks. Guess you must have been wondering about us, huh, Cartwright? <laughs> Fine, warm welcome everybody gave you when you drove in. Well, everybody jumped up to help you. Yeah, as, as a matter of fact, uh, I was. You know, I've seen a lot of wagon trains west, but I don't believe I ever saw a bunch like you. No. Two women, two thieves, a dying man, a discard who should have been dead a long time ago. But we ain't a marching towards the golden promise of your grand and glorious west, God, right? No, we've been there. We had a belly full. Now we're heading back east, running out with our tails between our legs. <laughs> God, it looks like you joined a company of the losers. Well, well brother, you gave me quite a scare there for a while. You're looking perky as a jaybird now. 
so I feel, too. It isn't the time for talk, Mr. Cartwright. Your brother needs rest. Ma'am, I don't know how I'm going to ever thank you and your father for what you've done. I want no thanks. Dr. Dawson's getting the sleep he should have had hours ago. He mustn't be disturbed. And he's not my father, Mr. Cartwright. He's my husband. I wish you wouldn't. Yes, well, it's my fault that you're here, Anna. That's why I need a taste of this to get the taste of that out of my mouth. Smack dab in the middle of Indian country, war parties all around us. <laughs> I brought you out here to get you killed. No, Papa, don't say that. Oh, yes, not just you, all of us. All of us are going to be killed. Oh, why? Why didn't I leave you in Virginia City? It's one good thing about it. You won't even see them or hear them till it's too late. That's how it was at Bishop's Creek, Anna. Two hundred, three hundred of them. Half the troop were dead before we even heard a sound. Papa, don't think about it anymore. I should have been dead, too. I, I would have been if my horse hadn't bolted. He took the bit in his teeth that he... I, I couldn't stop him any more than I could stop the wind. That was a long time ago. Now, the worst, worst part of it at all, my, my own daughter, my own flesh and blood doesn't believe me. Of course I do, Papa. Oh, sure. Sure you do. Just like the court marshal board, believe me. I wouldn't do that. I thought I heard him call. I, I was just trying to help. The gun on your hand? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. But you're supposed to be in bed. We both are. Yes, but first I'm going to take a look at my patient. Come along with me. Look, Doc, I'm feeling fine. Hey, just lie down there and let me take a look. waiting for him with this what's it all about doc well I, I couldn't employ any honest men to drive my wagons in the face of all this indian trouble i had to take what i could get well when you hire a thief you expect him to try to rob you i have two thieves in my employ breck and fraser both have the idea that I have a considerable amount of money stashed away on that wagon. I let him think so. Uh, you're not only heading the trouble, you, you bring it along with you. No, not really. You see, they keep an eye on each other. Well, this is the first time either one of them has had a chance to get near my wagon alone. Look, Doc, why don't you be smart? I go back to Virginia City. Why take the risk? We'll the Indian troubles over with. How long will that take? Two, three weeks, a month at the outside. 
where I was born. I want to see my son. This is my granddaughter. I've never seen her. Look, I can understand that, but what difference does it make if you see her now or, or a month from now? I don't have a month. I don't have three weeks to spare, Mr. Cartwright. I'm a dying man. Get yourself some rest. Frazier said I should give you this. You're next to stand guard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, thanks. Thanks, I uh, guess I kind of talked too much last night, didn't I? It's all right. I didn't mind. And then whatever happens, I just want you to know that you're the finest daughter a father ever had. Thank you, Papa. Whatever happens. Yesterday's biscuits. You must be feeling pretty good the way you're eating, Joe. No reason I shouldn't, is there? No, no. no you know, Joe, uh, <clears throat> I promised these folks that I'd ride with them. Be an extra gun in case they run into Red Pony. Well, it's two guns I can still pull a trigger. They ain't going to Virginia City, Joe. They, they're going east. Where is he? I don't know. How long has he been gone? Just a few minutes ago, I gave him breakfast. Oh, all right, all right. What's all this about? Mulvaney's gone, along with half the shells we got left. He did it again, huh? Bishop Creek all over again. That time he left a troop to get chopped up, and this time he leaves his daughter. No, he wouldn't. He did. His saddle and his horse are gone, and the tracks lead straight east. He was drinking. He didn't know. Don't make no difference why he went or how come. A man out there alone ain't gonna last long. We're gonna have to go get him. Not me. I say good riddance. Well, my job is here. I gotta take care of the women and Doc Dawson. Well, get with it. Jump me. They jumped me be before I could even draw. I don't know. I got, I got so scared. I, I couldn't think, Cartwright. I, all I could do was run. We better get out of here. There's more of them out there, too. They're, 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 they're liable to jump us any minute. Yeah, and they probably heard that gunshot. But they ain't too close or they had already been on us. Come on, let's get out of here. Sergeant, you and Burns take the West Fork around Half Butte, and then back to Virginia City. Yes, sir. Sergeant, just remember there are two of you and a hundred of those Indians. Yes, sir. Report back to headquarters when you get there. You can ride back with them, Mr. Cartwright. Well, my sons are still somewhere out here, Lieutenant. We better move out. We're wasting time. It's a good thing Mulvaney rode east to see what was out there. If he hadn't, that Indian scout had seen these wagons coming, and it all been over real quick. The rest of that war party will find a dead scout and two sets of tracks, and then they'll be all over us, thanks to Yellow Betty. Well, that's why we got to get moving and get moving quick. There's a stage station back on the trail to Virginia City. But that's behind us, west. Yes, ma'am. But we can find men and guns there. And even if we don't, we can fort up and make a decent fight of it. But we don't want to go back. 
Tell them, Isaac. We want to go east. We should have stayed in Virginia City. If you guide us, we might get back there alive. We'll make it. We'll save time by lightening the wagons. We'll jettison everything but what is absolutely necessary. No, Isaac. Not the gifts you're taking to your children and grandchildren. Presents from a man they've never seen or long forgotten. We'll leave them here and hope they delay and interest the Indians long enough to save a life or two. Pretty rough, Doc. Why well, is gonna slow down? No, no. Don't do it, Doc. I'll be all right. Oh. Oh. You better stop, Mr. Dustin. Your husband needs you. I wasn't going to say anything. Well, I don't sit there staring at me like that. I, I don't like it. I wasn't staring, Yes, Papa. you were staring just the way all the rest of them look at me, like I was some kind of piece of felt or something. I suppose I am. No, Papa. That isn't true. What's the holdup? Dr. Dawson. Mrs. Dawson is giving him some medicine. Yeah, and I'm taking mine. Brave water. Hey, go ahead, Conrad. Tell him what I was doing when you found me this morning. You better go easy with that whiskey. We got a long ways to go. All right. And I'll tell you what I was doing when he found me. I was running, running away. Papa, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter? What do you mean it doesn't matter? I was running away. I was going to leave you behind to be killed. Papa, I said it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go talk to Miss Dawson. How's your husband, ma'am? We have two very sick men in this wagon. Little Jones works, huh? Burning up with fever. Infection, I said, Ann. <laughs> Stage, stage. Right around the bend. No sign of life. I'd feel better if there was some smoke in the sky. I'm just happy there ain't no buzzards up there. Get him out of here quick. <laughs>
on, Paul, but you're sure welcome. Some extra weapons. You take that side window. You cover the back. There's only three or four of them now. Not enough to make a real fight. But they'll keep us pinned down until the gunfire brings the rest of them. What happened to Joe? He got an arrow on me, sure. Yeah. Huh? We've got a casualty. The old man. He's going fast. Isaac. Isaac. Can you hear me? I went away for a little while. But then I heard you. And I came back. for my foolish stubbornness. I've done you all great harm. Shh. We'll be all right. Don't worry. You're going to be all right, Isaac. You will. No. We both know better. But at least there's no pain now. Please take care of it. She's a fine woman. She's gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right, too. No pain. No pain at all. that ever lived. For you two to sing out of, out of a scalp by now. I'll tell you what, Joe. If we need any help, we'll sing out. Anna. Anna. Bishop's Creek. My horse didn't bolt. No. I nearly ripped his sides open with my spurs, getting me out of there. And today, when I was supposed to be out scouting, looking for help, I wasn't. I was just. Trying to save my own worthless neck. Papa, why don't you stop torturing yourself? Worst thing I ever did was to bring you out here when I knew there could be trouble. I, I don't know why you even speak to me. You're my father. If I was you, I'd be ashamed to admit it. As much as we need the guns, there's one man here we could do without. You mean Mulvaney? I mean Bishop Creep Mulvaney. He ran and got a whole troop slaughtered. He's not the man to cover that corner. I'll talk to him. Anna, Mrs. Dawson can use you. Soldier, that, that bomb. 
on. Gives us a blind side. A couple think they're sneaking from the other side and come charging through before we ever knew they were there. Sure. Get you all killed. Well, any of you made a big mistake, you paid a big price. Court martial, disgrace, lost career. You have a chance to even things up right now. The horse tell you what I did this morning. Yes, he told me. And you trust me? A man who'd run out on his own daughter? Things have changed now. He can't run. Twenty feet out of there, he'd be killed. You gotta fight to stay alive this time. Even a cornered rat or a coward. Rat, coward, animal, dog, tiger, man. You got a shotgun, you got shells, you got a six gun. What's more important, you got what very few other men have. Hmm? A second chance. Pa! Pa, it's over here! They heard those gunshots and they came running. And they'll talk to see how they're gonna do it and then they'll come. She wish that wagon wasn't out front. That makes two of us. Well, that, that barn back there isn't the only blind spot. The wagon out front's another one. You know, they could sneak in behind it, push it up to the front door, they'd be inside on top of us before we know what happened. Well, let's hope they don't think of that. Oh, they will. They will. We only had a little dynamite, two or three sticks, and blow the wagon to smithereens. They'd never be able to use it for cover. We could use a troop of cavalry, too. We don't have them either. I counted 12 of them out there. They're going to keep us pinned down until we run out of shells and then burn us out. I also spotted a horse out back. Now, if you give me covering fire, I can ride out and get help. Listen to him. Huh? You hear the panic in him? He's got the shakes. Wants to save his own hide. I'm an old hand at running, Johnny. I know all the signs. Now, don't try it. Don't even try it. Stay right where you are. They'll kill you before you get ten yards. It's quiet now. It's worth a try. Better get back to that window. They'll be coming any minute. You can go back to your front window. I'll defend this one.
last attack was supposed to cover this snake attack in the barn. It didn't work. Push that wagon right up to the door. All right, everybody. Get ready. What? It's gonna be all right, Anna. Of course. I mean it. I mean it. It's it's gonna be all right. I want us to march. Of course, Papa. Yes. Could I could I take this? You saw what happened to Fraser? That's what I do best. White flag or no white flag, I'll kill you. Ready to leave when you are, sir. Miss Mulvaney, one request, ma'am. I'd like to send this back to West Point. They have a museum there for weapons used bravely and valorously. I'm sure they'd be proud to have it. Daddy would be proud, too.
Sergeant! Those Paiutes are after only one thing. If we keep them here, they're gonna get them. You move out in five minutes with troopers Burke and Sloan and the prisoner. I'll give you covering fire to get you started, then fight a delaying action to give you some running room. Ponderosa Ranch. Due west of here. Now move out, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, hey. I sworn I heard gunshots. Yeah. Small war party just off the draw. How many men did you lose? Those two. Who's your prisoner, Sergeant? Wabuska. The Paiute who calls himself a god. Wabuska, he's the one who's heading up those raiding parties, isn't he? That's right. We captured him three days ago, and we've had to fight to keep him ever since. Nobody's going to rest real easy until he's in federal prison. Maybe you can help me. I'm supposed to turn him over to the commanding officer of the Virginia City 116th Militia, Major Ben Cartwright. Well, Sergeant, I'm Ben Cartwright. Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa? Yeah, but the 116th was deactivated years ago. I'm Colonel Brill, sir. You and the 116th have just been called active duty. set fire to his mattress last night. Tried to burn down the jail. If it wasn't for Hack there, he could have done it. I had the thing burning pretty well when the smoke woke me up. Jail burn. But not Wabuska. Fire, wind, storm, and water are all friends of Wabuska. Even bullets cannot hurt me. Bad enough for Booster, believe me. He's got the whole Paiute tribe believing. Ah, Ben, I guess we all knew the militia could be reactivated. It's been a long time. You and I are a lot older. Yeah, we sure are. Then I got my orders. Maybe if I can get Wabuska to Fort Churchill, the rest of the chiefs will listen to reason. I don't envy you the job, Ben. But I gotta admit, I'll be happy to get him out of here. I'll be just as glad to be rid of him as you are. Hey, Paul. Sergeant Anchor and Little Joe did all right. They got about 20 men coming down the street toward the jail. Well, there's still some spirit in the old 116th, eh? Detail! Halt! Detail! Left! Face! Oh, I see better join in, sir. Right, Paul. Ah, that is right. Major Paul. Sir. Sergeant? The son and I found 20 men, sir. We lost two coming down the street. Made the mistake of passing by a saloon. Thank you, Sergeant. Now, men, I'll be short and simple. We've all been together in the 116th. And 
I've been recalled to active duty and empowered to organize a detail. Uh, I'm looking for volunteers. Well, it might help if, uh, if you told us what we were volunteering for, Ben. I'm organizing an escort detail. Take a prisoner to Fort Churchill. Oh, now, wait. Wait a minute, Ben. I'm not even sure that you have the right to call us together, but I'd overlook that. If it's my wife and kids I'm defending. Now, it's a prisoner detail, like I said. It's that Wabuska, ain't it? You think I'd do anything to defend him? I say hang him and get it over with. Yeah. Well, I say, Hold it. It's a long ride. I came here looking for volunteers, not asking for conversation. If it's the town that needed defending, I'd be the first one to come forward. But I don't know anybody who'd volunteer to take that Paiute to Fort Churchill. What with the whole country crawling with war parties. Are there any volunteers? Come on, Spence. We've been hanging around this town long enough. <laughs> this is our chance to get to Abilene. Oh, with a bunch like this, we ought to make it through Indian country all right. Is that right? You and Joe going? That's right. Then I am, too. Tim Kelly volunteering. I say when it comes to fighting, one good cowhand is as good as four or five of them Paiutes. This ought to be a chance to prove it. Sorry, Ben. You understand, Ben. Foot cotton uh, and a bar rail at Silver Dollar. Guess I'd been here sooner. I hear tell them Paiutes got a whole new special brew, and I, I'd kind of like to try that one. So you count me in all, all the way. Now that Pete Hansen there, he's got my brother Hack locked up for busting a chair off my head. Now you tell old Pete to let him out, and and Hack will come along with us. How about it, Pete? If we can get those two to fight Indians instead of each other, you'll have a couple of good men. Hey, hot boy! I volunteered for you. Now make sure you come along or I'll move your jaw sideways some. I hear you, but you ain't gonna knock my jaw over none. He'll be with you, Major. Sergeant, round up some supplies and ammunition for ten men for five days. Rest of you men, get your horses. Be back in an hour. Dismiss it. Indian country from here on out. Major, begging your pardon, sir, but I think we'd be better off without some of these men. Which ones? Well, those two brothers. Hey, give me some of that, wait. You? Give me that back. I'll give it to you. You, you young boys are like hack. You know how I was drink, Bert. What about him? Fighting? Unreliable? Sergeant, have you ever tried to work out the night before? Oh, it's, um... Yes, sir, I have. Lots of times? Yes, sir. You got over it, didn't you? Well, they will, too. What about that trigger-happy kid? He's liable to shoot himself in the leg or shoot one of us. Before we get to the top of that rise. Yeah, that's true. He might. But we're going to keep him on anyhow. We'll ride a scouting order from here on in. Yes, sir. I'll ride point, show the men how.
Says he's a god. He got teeth like a wolf. This is a cold camp. Iron rations, no fires, no noise. You rode point today. That's a risky job. You stuck your neck out. It's got no long future, Spencer. That's why we change every day. Your duty tomorrow. I hope you're lucky. <laughs> You'd miss me, huh? No, but uh, but if you're lucky, we might all reach Fort Churchill alive. As good a spot as any for my watch. I can see the whole valley from here. Tim, I'm gonna spot you on the other side of camp. Be careful. All right. This will be your guard post. Now, Kelly, you keep a sharp watch. If you see or hear anything wrong, whistle like this. You bet, sir. And Kelly, remember, you're not to leave this watch. Don't worry, Major. Ain't nothing gonna happen that I can't handle. Like I said, them Paiutes ain't much. Now don't try to be a hero. If you see or hear anything wrong, whistle. Have some of those peaches, I sure be obliged. It's been a while since I ate. Major! Where'd you come from? Out there. up friend here. Looks like you could uh, give a bobcat the first bite come on with a fur coat. He just popped up, Major. I didn't see him or hear him come in. My name's Candy. Where are you from? Any town within 500 miles east of here. I've been there. What's your business? Trying to stay alive. How'd you find this camp? Simple. I heard it. I uh, walked upwind to the voices. I saw the guards. I didn't want to bother them, so I just walked on in. Uh, that Paiute heard me coming. He was watching and waiting when I walked up. I'm the only one that's doing any talking. Any of you men got names? Cartwright. Major Cartwright. Major? That sounds like Army. Militia. Out at 16th. A militia, army, what's the difference? A big difference. No offense to the major, but if this was a regular army detail, you'd never got past those guards. Well, maybe not, but I sure would have tried. I sure am hungry, Sergeant. Could I have a can of those peaches now? This one sing, and you'll bring them all right here. Are you coming? 
come. You die. All of you. One more sound, and you'll be chewing on this all the way to Fort Churchill. <laughs> Candy. Candy. Now, what kind of name would that be? My name? After a while, it won't sound any funnier than uh, Steve. Or a hoss. You've just come from the country which we're headed. What's it like out there? You're going to run into just about every Paiute in this part of the world. And some Shoshone and some Utes. All of them wearing war paint and hunting for scalps. Don't ask me how many. I was too busy hiding and too scared to count. You said you walked in here. Where'd you leave your horse? About two days, about 40 miles behind. We shot out from under me. You wouldn't have an extra horse, would you? No, sorry. Afraid of that. <sighs> Tell you what, I'll settle for another can of peaches. Devil did he go? I wish I knew. Hey, don't. Much to report. It's pretty quiet. No sign of that candy, fella. A few night birds and some field mice making enough noise to keep me company, and that's it. They keep looking at those shadows long enough, they all begin to look like Paiutes. Yeah. Well, just as long as they don't make any sudden moves. <laughs> right. I'll see you a little later. I put this stuff with the fellow's six gun and carbine. I'll deliver it to his next of kin, if and when. The reason he's dead, he didn't obey orders. If he'd have stayed where the Major put him, even if he'd have whistled like he was told, he'd still be alive now. It is no matter. Tomorrow you all die. I was just telling him, Major, that on a mission like this, when one man disobeys orders, he can get a lot of us killed. That's right. <laughs> Sure makes a fella feel good. Everybody's so glad to see him. Oh, well, it might be. If we know where you've been and why. Horse hunting. I told you I've been walking for two days. I figured those Paiutes owed me a horse. It took me an hour to find him. At least two hours unaccounted for. I wanted to make sure that brave was alone. There's only one set of tracks leading in. There's no smoke on the wind anywhere close. The one thing I didn't figure was the kind of horse I was going to find. You know this horse, Sergeant? Colonel Brill's mouth. A troop must have been completely wiped out after we left with the prisoner. Just as Wabuska promised. Paiute, Shoshone, Ute. Kill all soldiers. All white men. One more sound, you're going to be wearing that gag. 
But anyway, they're going to be looking for this horse come first light. No, we'll be gone by that time. You coming with us? I hadn't figured to. I got no love for the militia or the army. Saluting and uh, taking orders and saying sir just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I started off on my own when I found him. Why did you come back? Got lonesome. I figure when the Paiutes start taking horses away from the cavalry, a man alone doesn't stand much of a chance. So I'd like to ride with you. I'll even learn to salute. You learn to obey orders? Yes, Major. All right, from now on, we ride two-man point. Second one keeps the first one in sight. He keeps in sight of the main body himself. We'll leave it an hour. Yes, sir. Spence, he ought to still be in sight. Gotta get yourself a little shut-eye? Yes, sir. I got the guard duty right before dawn. 
Have a good rest. Thank you, sir. seen another sunrise anyway. And after what happened to Spence yesterday, I thought those Indians would be here last night. Come on, get up, will you? Hey, you can sleep when we get back to Virginia City. Get up. Where's that, Joe? You stand and watch. You'll leave me about 2 o'clock this morning. jail and I brought him out here just to get him killed I think it is. Yeah, that's when it. Come on, Chief. I didn't think could be stampeded into making more.
my turn. What they want to do? They want you to go out there so they can kill you. So we can all go out there one by one, and they can kill us one by one. They're waiting. Just wait, not there, Major. Now listen, be quiet. Look what they did to be Hack. Quiet. Did you hear me? Oh, you gonna stay with the detail, and you gonna obey orders? Do you understand? Hack. Oh, Hack. <laughs> Shortly. They'll wait for full dawn now. I believe you're right. I'll trick back every half hour. Major, with your permission, sir, there's something I'd like to get off my mind. Back there in Virginia City, when I saw the size and shape of this detail, I came within an inch of deserting. Cow hands, plot busters. They didn't know a hand salute from a water bucket. I was sure that if they saw one Paiute or heard one shot fired, that they'd scout us so far and fast it'd take two weeks hard riding just to get them in sight again. Kind of wrong, wasn't I, Major? The Cloudbuster showed me how. That first day was just like I thought it'd be, but. But after that first night, they pulled together quicker than any group I ever saw. Yeah, they're good men. All of them. Yes. It's your supper, if that's what you want to do with it. It's all right with me. Tonight they gather from all the camps. Tomorrow they set me free. You've said that more times than I can count. Now, since you don't want to eat, I don't want to listen. Why don't you just open up? Tomorrow they kill you and all of them. I kill them for them. What were you saying? Ah. That's what I thought. Coyotes? Should be dawn in about four hours. We'll move out in two. And they'll be waiting for us. A big reception party. Now, you came in from that way. How far are we from Fort Churchill? 
Was the crow flies or, or dodging war parties? Uh, straight line. About eight, ten hours. About the Paiutes, Shoshones, and Utes all banded together out there to stop us. That could be just plain too far. Belgian Steve, sir. I know. I saw it. Make the odds about ten to one. Yeah. Gotta stay there. Just set a range until they find out what we're gonna do with, with the chief and Wabuska. Why you do this? Nothing can save you now. for many years. I've been to your house. You've been to my house. We've exchanged many gifts of friendship. Long ago, yes. But now, all changed. You and I have not changed. We are still the same. But out there, things have changed. Many people have died. Many more will die. Thousands of soldiers will come. Your tribes will be destroyed, all of them. We will not die. Only the white men will die this time. Bullets will not hurt Wabuska. He laughs at white men's guns, and he will teach us his magic. Wunetka, you're a wise man. How can you believe this? Oh, look at him. Wabuska, he rides through hundreds of bullets all this day, and not one harmed him. We rode through the same fire. Nothing happened to us. We were just lucky in the rest, that's all, Chief. He cannot be hurt. He will never die. It is written, 
Wabuska will lead our people to victory everywhere. In my own lodge, with my own rifle, I fired at him, and the bullet leave no mark. Will that guy trick you? No, he has great power, power to destroy our enemies. He's a man. He's a man like you and me. And if he has such magical powers, why doesn't he use them? Why doesn't he make himself disappear in a puff of smoke? Why does he allow himself to be captured by us? It was my wish. Take me to your strongest fort. I will melt away. Your strongest iron cannot hold me. All right, Winnick. Let's find out if he's a man or a god. If I should have put it into him, you bleed and he'll die. Major, you can't do that, sir. Sergeant, this is my responsibility. What are you afraid of, Opuska? This is only a white man's bullet. White men's bullets cannot harm you. You've said so many times. You're a god. You have magical powers. All right, let's see how these magical powers work right now. Stop him! Stop him! Oh, Wabuska, I see fear in your heart. You tremble like a woman. For this one, my braves have died. <laughs> He bleeds, like any man. I have been a fool. What do you do with us now? Go back to your people. Tell them Obuska bleeds. Tell them he cries. Tell them he's no longer your leader. Tell them that they must allow us to go through to Fort Churchill, where he'll be punished. And speak to all your tribes. Say to them that there must be no more waste of lives, that no more blood must run in the sand again as it ran today, white man's or red man's. Tell them there must be no more false gods. Tell them this, Chief Winnick. You shot him? You saw the death, the blood, the senselessness. Would I have shot him? Would you? Take charge of prison. thing I forgot to ask. Yeah. What's this military duty pay? Volunteer duty, food, bandages as needed, and a big vote of thanks. Well, uh, do you think that vote of thanks could be stretched to include a horse and a saddle? You recall that Paiute kind of shot mine out from under me? Yeah, I recall. Yeah, I guess it could include that much. And more, maybe. We're gonna need some roundup hands once we get back to the ranch. Be hard work, but one thing for sure, the power won't be shooting your horse out, money. Oh, no thanks. I'm not looking for a steady job. I got a lot of traveling to do. Kind of sounds to me like the man doesn't like hard work. Now, wait a minute. The two of you never saw the day when I couldn't work you both right into the ground. I could show you more riding, more roping, more bulldogging. Looks like you just hired yourself another hand, Paul. All right. All right, for a while. 
But uh, it's got to cut both ways. I can leave anytime I get the notion, and you can send me down the road, same way. Sounds fair enough. Yeah, I guess it sounds fair enough. All right, boys, I guess we got ourselves a new hand. And mister, you got yourself a job. for your charity. Don't pay it, no mind. Anything for my Mexican friend. Thank you. Muchas gracias. You're most kindly welcome. <laughs> Sit down, amigos. traveled a long way from our country to this El Dorado in search of riches. Be patient, Blas. It will come, you will see. No. No, it will not. It should be apparent to you. In this country of equal opportunity, some are more equal than others. Streams which the gringos have worked over a thousand times to know that there is no gold. This we can work, but nothing else. But every day one hears of three strikes where others have searched before. That's right, Blast. You've heard of it. We all have. Perhaps we may be that lucky. If the Holy Mother wills it so. This is. But it would make no difference. The gringos would come. With their angry faces and their guns and their papers, which they would shove under our noses to prove that we had no right to our claims. You know this, amigos. What do you propose? That we return home? Not immediately. Soon, but not immediately. May we search for gold in the stream a little longer? No, this stream has nothing more for us. But there are many rich men in Virginia City. This is where we should search for gold. Perhaps we can persuade one of these to share his wealth with four sad Mexicanos. <laughs> That's $20 in a gun. Well, we noticed your fine horse and saddle. Compadres, have you noticed how wealthy the wealthy look even in work clothes? How nice it must be to work in such clothes. Fine jacket, soft shirts, and this saddle look. Would feed a village in Sonora for a week. How wonderful to be successful in this land of equal opportunity. We shouldn't uh, in my pocket and get the $20. First, unbuckle your fine gun belt. And since we have noticed you are left-handed, use your right hand and stay alive, please. Where can my little Joe is? He ought to have been back in Carson City a couple hours ago. 
Well, you know, little Joe, he can always find something or someone attractive in Carson City. Yeah. You better get out to the corral, help you open it. On my way, Bo. I do not identify myself, senor. Be sufficient, I am a Mexican. The solution then far from home. <laughs> well, come on inside. No, 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 gracias. I, I do not wish to soil your floors with my filthy Mexican boots. Senor, uh, a direct answer to a direct question. Whom do you love most in the whole world? What kind of question is that? Whom do I love most? What's this about? Please, to answer my question. I love my sons most in this world. Why? What do you want? A hundred thousand in gold, senor. What? As you now suspect, I hold your son for ransom. My son's in Carson City with friends. You know better. However, to save time, your son has a... a tiny white scar on his left thumb. Has he not, senor? What about it? <sighs> Here. Is your son's left arm, senor? A rabbit's foot. <laughs> Did your stomachs turn to fists? Or sick with warm water, did they, senores? All right. You scared us. I believe you now, except the fact that I have your son. What are your terms? A hundred thousand in gold for your son. All in one piece. Two thumbs, two ears, and so on and so on. It'd be about close to 400 pounds of metal. Take a... A good couple of days to round up that much gold. Four hundred pounds? That's a great deal of weight. And we have far to go. I am not an unreasonable man. Let's make it 25,000 by tomorrow. That will be easier for you and easier for me. It'll be easy for me to kill you. And you would exchange the corpse of your brother for mine. What a poor business judgment. You do not wish that. Not as your father. I will come for the gold tomorrow. If you attempt to follow me or, or in any way try to rescue the young man, he will be killed. I am serious, senor. you know why I've sent for you, Perkins? I have no foggiest idea, sir. I think you do. I've never seen such a mess. Work that'll have to be done over again. I'll get right on it, Mr. Aldrich. Don't bother. Your account was $80 short. Replace that $80 this afternoon or get out. I was going to replace it, sir. And this afternoon, too. I had some expenses, medical expenses, big ones. In Anderson Saloon. That's all, Perkins. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, by the way, sir. Old man Cartwright and his son are out here to see you. And stalwart Sheriff Coffey. What? Well, send them in. Mr. Cartwright. Mrs. Cartwright, Cartwright, and Coffey. Ben, I'm sorry to keep you no, waiting. Fred. I didn't know you no, were there. Sir, I'm not, Fred, this is an emergency. 
I need $25,000 in gold. Not paper, not silver. Gold. And I need it right now. Gold. Well, Ben. All right, Perkins. That's all. Look, Fred, don't hang us up. This is a matter of life and death. Hablamos de mujeres. Ya, ya, ya. Vamos a hablar de viejas. Are you ready to eat now, amigo? Like I told you before, if you untie my hand so I can feed myself. You're too valuable a prize. Emiliano will spoon feed you. Emiliano. Dame la tortilla. few pounds of bright metal, which means so little to you, so much to us. I, I am not an uneducated man. I am the schoolmaster in our village in Sonora. And Chuy, my fat friend, who is now armed with your weapon, and is now flanking you to your left, he has the village general store, which he calls the turno cruzando el disco del sol, which means Saturn crossing the disk of the sun. Imagine a general store with a name like that. Is that not lovely? Let me tell you something. In our village, we surely must be the poorest in all of Sonora, men try to make a living from the lime, which is what our soil consists of, and in which nothing grows. Putting the lime in sacks and carrying them on their shoulders for 20 kilometers. Lime burns the skin and sears the eyes and the lungs. <laughs> Is he yours now, Chewy? See, we have him. Bring him back. Shoot you would be an enormous waste. Do not make us do this. We will watch him better this time. As I was saying, about our village which has nothing, and somehow they found a few centavos here, a few pesos there send us forth to the mountains of gold. Perhaps we will find nothing. But the chance was there. The hope. And what is life without hope? The only true ecstasy. And there has never been hope in my village. Not in my lifetime. Did you see, amigo? When we set out to come north, with all their hopes on our shoulders. They called us the conquistadores. The conquistadores. If you think I'm going to take disappointment back to that village, 
Mr. Cartwright, you are wrong. You be sure to tell the people of your village where you got that gold. Let me worry about that. Oh, by the way, do you wish to eat now? <laughs> the true pride of a rich man's son. Do not starve if you do not eat for a week. It could even be good for your soul. You better worry about your own soul. something you want to talk about private, you go ahead and talk. Well, I thought I had. I thought it was obvious. Well, it ain't obvious. You spell it out. Clotwright draws out 25,000 in gold. In gold, mind you, in a hurry. Sheriff Coffey's along. Horse Cartwright says it's a matter of life and death. And just because little Joe's out of sight, you would... Uh... You think he's been kidnapped? Could be in Denver, Salt Lake. Okay. Even if I'm wrong, the point is there's 25,000 in gold at the Ponderosa right now, and not sitting in some steel vault. Yeah, what's well, the rim fire saying something's going on? Perkins? Come first line. Let you and me investigate this situation. As far as we'll go. You have been cooperative and courteous, senor. Muchas gracias. When you reach the border, you release my son. Correct. With a horse and supplies. You keep your end of the bargain. Forget about all of this. But if you hurt Joseph, I'll follow you into Mexico. And I don't care how hard you try to hide, I'll find you. And I'll kill you with my bare hands. Have I made myself clear? We will listen, no? Scrubby Mexican heading south for something that's plenty heavy. Shall we follow all that, gentlemen? No rush. As far as peace to the border with one sorry mule carrying a two-mule load. We got plenty of time to get back to Virginia City and line up some of my friends. We gotta see if no harm comes to old Ben Cartwright's boy. And the sheriff ain't doing nothing. Don't ask me why. But there's some sharp eyes and ears. None of us even know about it. What do you reckon we ought to do about it, Bill? The only thing good citizens can do when the law don't act. We gotta find them kidnappers and rescue little Joe. Right, right, he's right. But Ben Cartwright ain't the sort of man to sit around and twiddle his thumbs. Little Joe's being dragged to the border by a bunch of murdering foreigners. He's the one we gotta think about. Uh, ben will be so glad to get him back safe, he'll probably pay us for our trouble. The Mexicans have got that gold. Maybe we ought to just pay ourselves. Let's go get him. Water. Perhaps we should wait here for a blast to catch up. No, no, no. We go on. It's a chance to get his jacket off. You are the impossible, amigo. You have once before tried to escape with your hands tied. What would happen if I would release them? I've got to get this jacket off. I'll be dead a heat stroke by noon. Permit me to doubt that. You don't deliver me alive and well to my father, I guarantee you there's going to be a posse as big as an army on your trail. Besides, you got my gun. 
Sí, I have your gun. Bueno. Amigo, please, there is no way to go out here, amigo. Please. I can't. I can't move. There's a snake down here. Well, what can I do? I cannot see it from here. Hand me your gun. The gun? No, I cannot give it a gun. Either give me that gun or shoot me. I don't want to die out here swelling with that poison. Gracias, amigo. Sí. When do we take him? Not sure. We gotta pick our spot. We don't want to split the go with all the others, do we? We have enough of a start so we won't overtake him and maybe start something. We'll be right at the border when they release little Joe. We'll be close enough. If they don't. No. Howdy, Ben. Boss. Glad you're both here. What's up, Roy? Well, it's at Anderson. Him and that bunch of hardheads that hang around this place rode out of town about dawn this morning. What's that got to do with us? Well, you remember that uh, bank clerk Perkins that helped you load the gold? He was with him. Now I just got a sneaking hunch that... That whole gang is going to try to cut in on your ransom money. I sent a deputy out to pick up the trail, told him that uh, we'd meet him at High Meadow, if that was all right with you. That's right. Here's a new track, Paul. Right here is where Anderson's bunch got on their trail. Looks like it was two or three hours ago. Maybe six or seven of them. Better get dark before soon. We better ride. Blas should be here. I hope nothing has gone wrong. Nothing has gone wrong. Blas will be here. With the gold? With the gold. And then, my friend, I'm sure Blas will release you here instead of at the border. If you uh, swear there will be no pursuit. Whatever my pa says, he's man of his word. It's still a risk. You return me the weapon after killing the snake? That is good enough for me. I hope one day you will come to our village after your gold has made it prosperous and beautiful. How clear your consciences must be that you post no watch. Coffee, Miliano. How are you, my friend? You're not bound? I can explain. I'd be interested. Blas, the gold. Have you the gold? Donde esta? Yes, I have the gold. Where is it, Blas? Oh. Can we see it? Is it with the horses, Blas? I have hidden it. Hidden it? Why so? Because I was followed all day. Let's mount and ride, now, even in darkness. Blas, did you see who they were? Uh, perhaps it was an anxious father and his other son, staying a few miles behind us all the way to the border. And if they are not, why not ride and get away? Because we are in the middle of the desert, and the animals would need more rest before they could cross it. And so would I. Tomorrow morning, 
we will unearth the gold before we ride out. You can see it then. Tonight, we post a watch. You're surrounded. We can see you, but you can't see nothing. Well, now. All right. Well, I put your guns away. It's not going to be any shooting. They don't hurt anybody. That's so, I wonder why. Don't seem likely. Dirty greasers being polite. You. You going to tell us where the goals are? Gonna make us go to a lot of trouble. Afraid of that. Yes, sir. I was afraid of that. One of your tricks, senior. Best thing ever came out of Mexico. It's dry, the rawhide shrinks. Neck stretches. Just enough to take the weight off your feet, just an inch or two. You won't get dizzy from the height or nothing. Anderson, you're not gonna torture anybody. Cartwright, you're sure acting unfriendly, considering all us risked our lives coming out here to rescue you. All right, so I'm rescued. Now let's take these men back to Virginia City to stand trial. We're gonna get the gold back first. The way you act, I got the funny feeling you're in with these criminals. Rob your pa. Oh, you want that gold, all right. But not for my father. Now, like I said, these men are going in for trial. Bone dry and burning up. You could probably use a drink, huh? Well, water to keep that rawhide from shrinking. <sighs> now, it's too bad I can't spare you some more, but uh, there ain't enough water out here for honest men to keep alive, let alone criminals. Now, are you gonna tell us where you hid that gold? Tell them where it is, it's not worth it. To my village. It is. Look, your village isn't gonna see that gold anyway if you die out here. That's the idea, Mr. Cartwright. You, you help this little old senior here to see the, see the light. They don't want to kill us, they just want the gold. That's right, nobody's gonna get killed. Not if you tell us where you hid the gold. Cut him down, Perkins. He's ready at last. I almost wish he decided to hold out. It'd have been something to see. Yo, you watch the others. Folk, you keep an eye on Cartwright. Come on, senior. Show us where the goal's at. You fetch it out. him? 
You're exactly right. When it comes to that, I don't need you. Hold it! Three shots! That kidnapper don't have a gun. Maybe he tried to run. Yeah, maybe somebody tried to run. I wouldn't be surprised if they were running over the hill with all that gold right now. Oh, they'd never do that. Yes, they would. Charlie! Straight up. I won't blow your head off. All right, you men, that's the sheriff talking to you. Now drop your guns and come on out here in the open if you know it's good for you. Now you're all lawbreakers, and you're under arrest. So don't none of you try nothing. Or you're going How are you, son? Yeah, I'm fine. Anderson Perkins took the other Mexican off somewhere. We got some shots. Go ahead, take a look. Keep an eye on him, Bob. Right. All right. Don't move. I was trying to help. I am afraid there is nothing anyone can do. Not, not this. Man, Anderson, Anderson shot me. I should have known. He'd want all the, all the gold himself. I... There you are. You better come with me. Did the, did the Mexican tell you why he wanted that girl? Does it matter? Yeah, I think it does. There you have it. There's no call to take us in like common thieves, Sheriff. He was just trying to keep them kidnappers from getting away. Oh, sure. That's why I was shooting at little Joe. Now, look, you men. We know that you was after that gold, and we got proof of that. And you're all going back to town to stand trial for attempted robbery and attempted murder. This one, take a minute, Ben. Then we'll go after Anderson. But Miss Heat, backing all that weight, he's not going to get very far.
He's only about an hour ahead of us now. Now we're gaining. The desert is not a merciful place. It does not forgive a man his mistakes. In some ways, it is like your courts. You heard, senor, that yesterday one of my men saved your son's life? Yes, I heard. He considered that if you hadn't kidnapped him in the first place, it would have been a necessity to save him? Yes, senor. It's gonna be all right. We'll pick him up on the way back. Now his water's gone. Now his horse is carrying the whole weight. It's twice as much as any of our horses are carrying. Let's ride. Is there any water in there? It's 50 feet down. Well, this is our last chance at water for at least 20 miles. Trying to lighten his load, huh? Yeah. Well, the saddlebag. Every pound he's still carrying must be doubling in weight with every step he takes.
out of anything. Champagne. Champagne is what we drink. But buckets of it. I'm a man of means. Gold bars in here. Still one missing. Spread out, we might have a chance to find it. Might be around here somewhere. I don't know, Joe. This desert's a big place. Probably couldn't find it even if we had an army. What do you think, Plus? As you say, it's a very big place. It is permitted to ask what happens to us now, senor. Myself and my friends. Chef? What's the law's attitude going to be toward these men? Well, then, kidnapping is a pretty serious offense. They could be sent to prison for quite a stretch, depending on the judge. Joseph? What do you think? So let's talk about kidnapping. Who got kidnapped? What do you mean, who got kidnapped? You were kidnapped. That's why we... I get it. You were just showing your friends from Sonora, Mexico, some of this beautiful countryside. Is that it? And as long as there's no law against sightseeing, I can't put them in jail. I guess you can go back to your village in Sonora. Muchas gracias, senor. Many thanks. Adios. Adios, amigo. Adios. Can't walk, but I think you can set a saddle down here. Oh, well, we'll manage. I had it. 
So you pick it up. Senor, you make me feel one inch tall. I want you to keep that. There's some chemicals you can buy that neutralize the lime in farm soil. And a deep well. It's good for irrigation. You are offering charity. Accepting charity is a whole lot less criminal than kidnapping. There are a couple of values that you still have to learn about, schoolmaster. Anyway, I don't consider this charity. I consider it an investment. One of these days, I'm going to ride down to your town. I'm going to look for some fields of good corn. And if they're the property of the town at large, then I'll know that my money's been well invested. If not, I'll take it out of your hide. Clear? Leave it, please, senor. 